Welcome, guys. We're celebrating our 30th anniversary of stopping the golf course from going in. like that <laughs> and they would have taken out the whole triangle yeah that was the plan originally and then they were going to save just the top and they said oh that, that'll be enough but it was only 22 acres and it would have fragmented the old growth and so we uh, opposed that and uh, now we're we have the full area protected uh, that is quite a <laughs> it's beautiful. How's the boy? Yeah, hey, Rod, how are you? Good to see you. I wouldn't have minded. <laughs> okay, so with the uh, formalities over with, I'll hand things over to uh, Paul Handel, our, our president, and he can tell you why we're here. So, yeah, I was asked to uh, present the history of how this conservancy came to be protected. So I'll give you a chance to go over the history, which we've also written down in a, a book, The Battle to Fight Hollyburn Ridge. Um, but it started really with Elaine. <laughs> That's why I'm so glad to see you here. Um, what had happened was the council had been putting forward a proposal to put a golf course in this area in 1988. But uh, the fact that there was old growth in here just wasn't known by the general community. Uh, the Hollyburners generally didn't know about it and it was just in an area which people didn't walk into and didn't really realize had um, significant old growth. The area that's just up from us, uh, Randy Stolman, who uh, was a dear friend of mine, uh, he wrote a book about the uh, old growth on the North Shore. And he told me that he'd always driven by here and planned to go in and check it out, but never did. So even he didn't know about the old growth that was in here. And when I say old growth, I'm talking about a large number of eight foot wide uh, red cedars, which were highly significant. Th there's old growth and then there's real uh, stunning old growth. And this was stunning old growth, which had been missed, which just wasn't well known. But when the golf course proposal was being prepared, they would have known they would have walked through the site and they came to get up with this plan showing shown right here of and this was right through the old growth in this area where there was all these giant uh, cedar trees six to eight feet wide there was tags hanging from it fairway number four so so it was known and so a report was done and Nowhere in the report did it really highlight the fact that there were some significantly large trees. There was some mention of old growth, uh, but um, there was one uh, line which Elaine had spotted in Karen Christensen's landscaping uh, report, which was a, a sta she was a staff person who was reviewing the developers' reports, and she said that there may be some yellow cedars that may be of public interest, of concern. And um, Elaine brought that to my attention. She also said she came up here on a hike and with Jeanette, Helmer. with Jeanette Helmer and had talked to some surveyors who were talking about this area becoming a old growth. But we didn't know at she, you didn't know at that time that there was these large number of giant trees. So um, Elaine ran into me at this meeting of WEN Worldwide Home Environmentalist Network. Uh, we met every. Uh, the last Wednesday of every month and in April she came up to me and she said I've heard about this uh, this uh, significant yellow cedar do you want to come up and check it out so Jeanette Elaine and myself walked went into the works yard we walked straight in, into the forest there and the first thing we saw was this tree almost eight feet wide yep. and it was just blew us away and then we walked in and there was more and more and we realized that there was something really significant here that 
had not been highlighted in any reports that people just didn't know about. So we had only two and a half weeks to bring this to the attention of the public because we're at the public hearing stage. These reports were released to the public because they were now ready to go to public hearing to get approval for the rezoning to be a golf course. And uh, that at that May public hearing, of course, we managed to fill the place of people. Uh, we, there was a North Shore News article with Elaine and I in front of a big tree and the word got out and people were on it. And so they adjourned that public hearing for a month and uh, realizing that there was a significant old growth, they actually sent the matter back to the golf course committee that they had structured, which was not made up of any conservationists. It was, it was made up of golfers. golfers. <laughs> right, strictly golfers. And so the golf course committee came up with a plan to cut away 20 acres and they, on the la at the last minute they increased it to 22 because of an area, a buffer area. But uh, they had said that all the big trees were, would be protected by this and they had this map which they said the trees, the big trees that were outside the 22 acres uh, were dead and that the, all the big big trees that were alive were in it. That turned out not to be true. And uh, we didn't know it. At the, at, by the time it hap came to the public hearing a, in June, I completely understand why the councillors voted for, you know, they thought there was a compromise here. They, you know, we were, they were being told that all the big trees are saved. And, you know, I didn't know how big the area was. And, you know, it's, it's hard to visualize that. And so, you know, we all went along with it. I went along with it. And um, so in June, they approved the plan to go ahead. Well, I was still coming up here and I was bothered. I said, I wanted to know how big the 22 acres really is. So um, I bought the survey equipment. I talked to the surveyor who's giving us uh, some advice uh, and he um, told me what to buy. And I came up here with the podiatrist, Catherine Gamel, and. So here's a lawyer and a podiatrist working on the side while hiking through the woods with our equipment surveying out the 22 acre site because we did, it wasn't until a few weeks later that I, we got a map of what the 22 acres looked like. And so we surveyed it out and we realized that this was way smaller than we expected. That some of the key areas that we wanted that had the biggest trees were outside the protected area. And, and the biggest tree in the whole conservancy was outside the protected area. So we realized, you know, that at that time, by that time, that it was actually 85 acres that needed to be saved, not 22. Um, and so uh, we, we got the word out that there was 85 acres that need to be saved. The 22 wasn't enough. And uh, we feel hoodwinked, you know, that we were told that it was more was protected than was. And that, of course, is a difficult battle to fight because it was already approved. What we were also asking for at the time was for a referendum. We thought that there should be a referendum on whether or not that there's uh, that uh, the land be leased to a private developer. And uh, there was a provision in the Municipal Act at the time which said that you could not lease out park land or recreational land um, for more than five years without a referendum. And the plan was to lease this for 50 years. The response back was this is not park land. It was never made into a park. It was raw land held by the district, owned by the district. And, you know, I, I took them at their word for it, that that was the case. Uh, and so we assumed that legally we couldn't force a referendum. We still asked for it. Carol Ann Reynolds tried to make numerous uh, motions and was uh, that you couldn't get a seconder. And so that, that we're now talking in August where she was trying to bring a motion for that. And um, so I, I decided to do some research on the land title. And um, because I had won this other battle to, with revolving Lynn Canyon Park uh, two, a year and a half earlier, because I found some documents that showed that some of the land was, set aside, was supposed to be set aside as park that they were trying to develop. And so I thought maybe if I check the title, I'll find something. Well, I checked the titles and I discovered there was a recreational purposes covenant on a, a large section of this land right in the heart of the golf course. And um, so I was thinking to myself, hey, if there's a recreational purposes covenant, why aren't they having a referendum? Because in law, you have to have a referendum if it's held for recreational purposes. 
So I thought the only way they could be getting around this is if they were making an application to remove the, uh, the restrictive covenant, the recreational purposes covenant from title. And the only way they could do that is by order in council. So I phoned up the order in council's office and I says, by the way, do you happen to have an application to remove a covenant on district lot? And I gave her the district lot number. And the lady went away and she came back. And she said, as a matter of fact, there is an application by the district of West Vancouver. Now the district councillors didn't know that at the time. And uh, the only people who knew that were the mayor and the municipal manager. And uh, it was just, so they were quietly, secretly behind everyone's back, taking away the covenant that would require a referendum. They were telling us that there's, there's no need for a referendum, there's no requirement for one. But there actually was, and they were trying to secretly take it away. Well, once I discovered that covenant, I realized at the time we had a premier who was very much a populist premier, William Van Der Zam. And Van Der Zam was committed to referendum. He believed in, you know, the public right to vote. And he would be the last person to take away our right to vote by signing it. Now, it would have been likely handed to him as just an order in council, routine measure, application by the district of West Van. But because what we did then is we ordered our letter writing campaign, uh, organized a letter writing campaign to the Premier to let him know that the effect of this order in council would be to take away our right to vote. And needless to say, we had a referendum. <laughs> and that referendum was held. And, you know, during much of the, the council meetings where there's, you know, two groups, there was us and then there was those who were for uh, the golf course. Uh, we constantly heard from people who are pro golf course, I speak for the silent majority. They would always say that, you know, the developers, you know, the people who are for the golf course, oh, I'm speaking for the silent majority and those guys are just rabble rousers. And um, it was so nice at the end when the silent majority finally got to vote and they voted to save it as an old growth conservancy. And so that's why we have that today. Uh, and so a few years, uh, two years later, there was a vote on making it a protected area, which I believe, Broad, you might have been making the motion on that. Uh, I have a few thoughts on when you're finished, if I could just... Uh, oh, you can. can yeah, um, but um, in fact, this would be a good uh, time for you to segue in. Okay. So if you'd like to come in and... Um, Rod was on the council at the time. What I want to say is that you guys did a fantastic job. Paul Hundle's research was just unbelievable. He got in there uh, and did research that, you know, not one person in a thousand would do. If we're here today in this old growth area, it's all you guys, but it's particularly Paul. I want to acknowledge that. And then in the book I'm writing of my 16 years as councillor and another 15 years as the Advisory Planning Commission and Parks Commission and so forth, 30 years, uh, I, uh, I've met, uh, one thing I really noticed in the book, in this book, that you guys, volunteers, citizens, have done so much to make this community beautiful. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience and we've, we've become a great community because of the people who live here, who have served on advisory commissions and on, on groups like yours and so forth. And just a quick word on why, why council was bamboozled on <laughs> this. Uh, it, 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 we weren't told there were big trees up here at first. Uh, and the park director brought us up and he didn't show us the trees. Of course, they're, they're a bit isolated, but nevertheless, we didn't know. And at the time, I admit I was kind of naive. I thought that golf courses were nice and green and be lots of fun and, uh, you know, it would be a good thing. And uh, we all thought that was, that was fine. And uh, uh, so we went along and it wasn't until uh, uh, Elaine got up here and Paul and the rest of you that we began to realize that uh, <laughs> there were trees. Then, uh, Mark and I, Mark Sager and I, came over, but we we didn't, we, you, talk, you mentioned Caroline Reynolds' uh, motion, it, we didn't second it because we knew it would be defeated. It was 4-3 at that point. It was Caroline, myself, and Mark. And so the idea was we defeated, but then we would try to persuade council to vote for the referendum, which we did. They did, eventually. Council was won over. Uh, at that point, the mayor who imposed it, uh, Don Lanscale, uh, they did a bunch of polling, and all the polls showed that the golf course would pass by two votes to one. So they were very confident, they had a secret budget, they had all kinds of things, and as, as you said, <laughs> the, the people came out and they voted for this. So it, it, it's a great experience. And I think one thing, sometimes, you know, 
uh, West Bend, a wealthy community. These people are in this just for themselves and for their property values. Which another funny thing about it is over the years, West Vancouverites voted for things that were environmentally sound even though they were economically uh, less profitable. And that's happened over and over again. One of the thesis of my book, what a, what a wonderful population we've had. We put aside money in favor of the environment and of the, the atmosphere and the beauty of the municipality. Um, Elaine, did you want to say something? Yes, uh, my friend Jeanette Helmer and I, here. my friend Jeanette Helmer and I uh, used to hike every Friday, and this is one of the areas we hiked in. And we came up here just by chance and saw all the action going on, the surveyors, all these exuberant people, and they we asked them what's going on, and they said, oh, golf course. So, of course, because we've been in this area so many times, and we thought, no, not happening. Nobody knows about it. And I purposely went to Paul. I saw um, his picture in the North Shore News, and Paul was the one who was fighting for another cause. Yeah, Sabling Canyon Park. Sabling Canyon Park, yeah. correct. <laughs> and we got together, and I have to say, it was a lot of fun. We had a blast. We came in with camera crews, thanks to Paul, because he knew CBC, CTV, Global, he knew all the outlets, media, it's all about media. Jeanette and I didn't know anything, we're with the Residents Association, we didn't have a clue. Paul got on board. We had CBC crews coming in here who hadn't ever hiked in their life, <laughs> and we were helping them bring their, their camera equipment in. So it was quite an experience for all of us, and once it hit the fan, let me tell you, it hit the fan. And there was us and them, and I tell you. Then Randy Stoltman got, we got Randy involved, and Randy had a bore that he took these samples. And of course the samples saw the age of these trees. And of course everybody's blown away. Nobody had a clue what's going on. Then we did tours. We had walking groups coming in, and it just blew up. Needless to say, mayor and council were not happy with us, but we took it to referendum, and that was the biggest coup of all because there never was a referendum on something um, environmental or anything considering this, this municipality. So I do thank Paul a lot, but we did have a really good time doing this. We met <laughs> wonderful people, and it snowballed. The whole thing just snowballed. So thank you, Paul, and everybody else, and Catherine Stagg. They started the conservancy, yeah, yeah, and yeah. away we went. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you, everyone. We're ready thank for you, cake. Paul. So, Catherine, did you want to cut the cake? <laughs> Elaine, maybe you could cut oh, the cake. Sure. What the heck? Okay. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for coming. <laughs> I got it going again, <laughs> if you want to bet. <laughs>